really recommend is that you do this alongside me so you really start to get it in your body whilst learning about the actions. So we're going to start off in a neutral position. So you're just going to stand with your feet facing forwards so they're about hip distance apart and you're going to stand up really nice and straight, glutes engaged, so squeeze your bum and then hands facing forwards, shoulders back and down. Now this neutral position here, everything, all of your major joints are in extension. So in this position, not only are your elbow in extension, your spine's in extension, your hips are in extension, and also your knees are in extension, so you can use this as a ballpark thing to say, here, I'm in extension. Now, counter to that would be flexion, which is the opposite. So the opposite to this place for extension is going to be flexion, for example, for your elbow. Flexion for the spine would be folding forward. Flexion for your knee is obviously going to be bending at the knee. Flexion at the hip and so forth. The only one that is less um, in line with this system is to make is for flexion of the shoulder, which is actually overhead. So apart from flexion of the shoulder, everything else pulls you into a fetal position for flexion. So extension is nice and straight. Flexion is in a fetal position apart from for shoulder flexion, which is up here. So shoulder flexion, shoulder extension. The next one is adduction and abduction. So this is the movement away from the midline. And the midline is all the way down through the middle of your body. So from your nose to your belly button. Now this sort of motion here, we're going to look at whether you're bringing your limbs towards the midline or away from the midline. So towards the midline is adduction. So you're adding it to the midline. And this is particular for your adduction of the arm, so from the shoulder, adduction, or from the hip, so you're adding back to the midline. And that's this motion here that you're pulling down, so adduction. Counter to this, so the opposite, is abduction. So you're abducting, taking away from the midline. So something like a lateral raise would be an abduction of a shoulder. So you're moving away from the midline. So the next one is circumduction. And this happens in a ball and socket joint. So for example, your shoulder or your hip. So, for example, this motion is circumduction, and that's because it's going around a whole circle, and the only two joints in your body that can do circumduction is your shoulder and your hip. The next one we're going to look at is for the shoulder blades in particular, so we're going to look at the whole shoulder girdle and how that moves. So we're going to start with elevation, so it's elevation of the shoulders, so we're lifting them totally up, it's like doing a shrug motion. And then the opposite to that one is depression, so you're depressing your shoulder blades downwards. So your shoulder blades would be pulling right the way down. Then you've got retraction, which is the process of really pulling your shoulder blades right back. And that's squeezing your shoulder blades as if you've got a pencil in between your shoulder blades. That's retraction of the shoulder blades. And then protraction is the opposite of that one where you're pulling forwards in this motion. So retraction, example of that would be in your seated row position when you're really pulling back. And then the reverse of that, protraction, is going to be when you're either on the returning phase of that seated row or, for example, doing a chest press. You're protracting your shoulders forwards and your shoulder blades start to separate. So they're the main ones around the shoulder in particular. But I'm going to introduce you to one that some people get mixed up. And this is horizontal flexion and horizontal extension. So we're going to move back to this same neutral position and really think that here is extension. So our arms here are also in horizontal extension. I'm just going to move them up a little bit. So here is horizontal extension. This is horizontal flexion. And we use these mostly when we're doing something like a pectoral fly, for example. So here we've got horizontal extension and horizontal flexion of the shoulder. Now the next ones we're going to look at are to do with the feet in particular, so just the feet. And this is going to be plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So plantar flexion is when you do a pointing motion with your feet, so pointing, and that would be something like a calf raise. And then the dorsiflexion is when you're opening the doors, you're going to take your toes to your nose, and that's flexing your feet, so you're dorsiflexing. So dorsiflexion is bringing your toes to your nose, and then plantar flexion is pointing the toes. So the next one is lateral flexion and extension. So again, come back to your neutral position. And then from this position, lateral flexion of the spine is when you're going to take your body to one side. 
just from the spine and then back up to the middle is back to extension. So lateral extension, lateral flexion of the spine. So when you do a side bend, for example, if you're holding weights down by the side for core, then that's going to work lateral flexion of the spine, lateral extension of the spine. Okay, then the next one is in particular used for the hand, but can also explain um, a laying position as well. So we're going to talk about prone and supine. So a pronation is here, and that's when your palm is facing downwards. That's also the position when you're laying on the floor, face down. So that's a prone position, or pronation of the hand is palm facing downwards. Supination of the hand is palm facing upwards, like you're holding a bowl of soup. So the opposite for laying would be laying on your back, facing the, up to the ceiling. So pronation, supination. So next is about inversion and eversion. Now just like pronation and supination of the hands, we can also have this of the feet. And this we're going to call inversion and eversion. So if you look at your feet now, closing down and really shortening your arches, so really pushing your arches into the floor, like you're rolling on the inside of your feet is inversion of the ankle. And then eversion is going to be rolling onto the outside of the feet. So you're almost turning up your arches, you're making them as big as possible. So inversion is rolling on the inside of your foot, eversion is rolling onto the outside of the feet. And then the very final one that we're going to talk about is all about rotation. So if this one says anything that rotates, you'd usually see it from a, an above position in that it's moving around. So you're rotating around an axis. That can happen in the spine. You definitely get rotation around the thoracic vertebra. So this is your main rotation here. But you can also get rotation between certain joints. For example, when you're uh, pronating and supinating, you're actually getting rotation around your gliding joints. So rotation happens also in the neck. You're getting rotation in lots of different joints within the body, but the main one to think about would be of the spine when you do something like a spinal rotation as a mobility exercise, for example, in your warm-ups.